I'm so excited for tomorrow, babe. I'll come and pick you up at 10 a.m. like we said before, yeah? Yep. Thanks, babe. Love you. How are you feeling about it, by the way? Are you nervous? <laughs> well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm a nervous wreck right now. <laughs> oh, I hope your dad will like me. I really do. I hope I do everything right and everything goes smoothly. And I better not put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine, babe. I'm sure he'll like you. In fact, he's always liked most of my ex-boyfriends anyway. <laughs> most of them? <laughs> yeah. The ones he didn't like were ones I weren't meant to be with anyway. So, I'd say he has a good eye for people and he's always right with his judgments. Oh no, now you're putting more pressure on me. <laughs> I better be on my best behavior so I can be in his best books then. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. Like I said, I'm sure you'll be fine, babe. Yeah, I've never met a girlfriend's father before, so I'm definitely gonna need your support. There's so much pressure. Oh man, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. I can't believe that I'm finally actually meeting your dad. Let alone asking him for your hand in marriage. You'll be fine! <laughs> Oh, by the way, your dad works for a company called Claxodyme Tradings, right? Yep, that's the one. Wow, that's a massive trading company. And he's the manager of the business planning department, right? Yeah, I think that was his title. I'm not 100% sure, though. And do people call him Mr. Evans? Uh, yeah, I guess they do. I guess most people don't really call him by his first name. How come you're asking me all of this? Well, I, I think I saw him today. He's got broad shoulders, right? And pretty tall, I'd say around six foot two or something. Yeah, that's him. That's my dad. Oh my God, that's so funny that you saw him before officially being introduced to him. Well, I probably told you this before, but you know how I go and visit different office buildings for work? Well, I think I saw him in the one that he works in. Oh, right. Nice. <laughs> I thought about going over and saying hi to him. I thought that maybe he'd be nice and say hi back or something. Maybe shake hands and give him a hug. <laughs> I don't know. But I didn't really feel ready. I hesitated a bit right then and there and then just left. But maybe I'll mention it tomorrow when I see him in person over lunch or something. <laughs> it might be funny. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that would work too, but you should have just said hi to him right there. He would have given you a handshake or something. Oh, but actually, on second thought, a lot of people, as in his colleagues that I've spoken to, have said that until you get to know him, he can come across as a bit intimidating. <laughs> so maybe you were right in not talking to him today. I guess he doesn't like to be interrupted, especially when he's super busy. Yeah, I saw the way he carried himself yesterday. He was just downstairs at the lobby on his way out, I think. He had a secretary walking next to him, and two other guys were just kind of tagged along behind him, each holding a briefcase. I figured he had somewhere important to go or something. <laughs> You're saying that you agree that he looks a bit intimidating, right? Yeah, my dad used to be in a gang till he decided to enter the corporate world. So I guess that might be where his strict demeanor can come from. A lot of people find him super strict and stubborn, or so I've heard. But when he's with me, he turns into the biggest softy you could ever imagine. Whoa, whoa, hang on a second. Did you just say he used to be in a gang? Oh, yeah. What? Wow. Yeah, I think his demanding side and the way he gives orders to people comes from back in those days. I told him to work on it before, actually, and he knows it's one of his flaws. But he also said it's a hard habit to break when he's so used to having so many people working under him. Oh, wow. Yeah, he also thinks he's always right, too. I mean, I admit that most of the time he actually is right, <laughs> but yeah, that's my dad. 
Well, at least he sounds like a nice guy when he's with you. <laughs> you guys sound like you get along really well. Yeah, we do. He's my daddy and I adore him. <laughs> I do sometimes wish that you were as strong and powerful as my dad, but I guess that's asking for too much. <laughs> I guess it can be hard for any man to be like my dad. He's the best. <laughs> well, that's a very nice thing for you to say, as usual. <laughs> I mean, your dad and I are totally different people. Look at us. We're even physically built differently. <laughs> I guess that's true. Well, anyway, when you see him tomorrow, just make sure you're on your best behavior. <laughs> just be nice, smiley, and be quick to think on your feet too, I suppose. You want to be in his good books, right? Yeah, I do, I guess. Then do that and make sure you don't get in a fight with him. That's the last thing you want. No offense, but you wouldn't really stand a chance. Well, I wouldn't worry about that. I mean, I'm not thinking of getting into a fight with him at all. <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All of his talk is making me feel even more nervous about meeting him tomorrow. Oh, I sure hope he likes me. Hi. So I heard that you work as a janitor? How dare you? Excuse me? Sorry, but I don't recognize this number. Who is this? Mr. Evans? R are you Katie's father? Yeah, that's right. Sam, was it? Oh, hi, Mr. Evans. Yes, that's me, and yes, I am a janitor. I clean office buildings for a living. May I ask, though, what did I do to make you so mad? How dare I? Do what exactly? How dare you even think that it was possible for you to marry my precious daughter? This better be a huge joke. Oh, um, well, she mentioned that you'd be visiting my house tomorrow, but I never expected a piece of trash like you to visit. You're not to enter my house. In fact, you're not to come near me or my daughter. Wait, hang on a second here. You do remember what you did to me, don't you? What? Are you telling me you've never been punched in the face before? Well, who am I kidding? Look at you, you weeny bony little piece of trash. I'm not surprised you've never even come close to a manly fist fight. I'll have you know that after you punched me, I had to be rushed to the hospital. You fractured my jaw. Ha 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 ha. Your jaw? Gee, how frail are your bones? Ha 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 ha. This isn't funny. What? Do you think that you can protect my daughter with no strength in you? Look at you and your feeble hands. I don't think so. You need to at least be able to throw a good punch if you're going to protect my daughter. Protect her? Of course I'll protect her with my life. But there's no reason to use violence like you did. Look, let me get this straight. Okay, I'm listening. What you're saying is that you punched me in the face multiple times and even broke my jaw, all because you look at all of the janitors out there in this world, including me, in contempt? <laughs> that sounds about right. You got a problem with that? A problem? Are you crazy? Are you actually insane? You broke my jaw. I can't eat properly, my head is throbbing, and I'm full of nothing but anger towards you. Do you think you can ever get away with this? Huh, listen to you talk. Do you think that you can ever get away with marrying my daughter? A piece of trash like you? To a well-educated, sweet, and beautiful girl like my daughter? She deserves so much better than you, you piece of filth. Well then, if you think that way, why not just say it instead of using violence? How can you justify the violence? Here's the way I look at it, all right? Idiots like you, with a brain like the size of a green pea, don't understand the power of words. Not any more than the power of the fist. I've lived longer than you have, meaning I've got a lot more wisdom and knowledge than you do. And trust me, from my experience dealing with guys like you, showing you my fist will always put you in place. Ha! Huh. What the? That's just total nonsense. I can see the type of man you are. 
You may be a big shot inside the small bubble that you live in, but from where I'm standing, you're nothing but a demeaning, discriminating, and malicious man. Ha! Huh. Well, well, well. The janitor likes to talk back to me, huh? You're just nothing but a poor kid who came to steal my daughter for her money. And that's my money you're trying to steal. I can see right through you, you little piece of filth. What? And now you're calling me names again? Gee, some big shot you are. Look, you want to know what the takeaway is here, Sam? Just keep cleaning and live the life of a lowlife. And stay away from my daughter. Psh, just you watch. You better sleep with your eyes wide open tonight. Katie, babe, I haven't heard from you this entire day. Are you just not going to say anything? Oh, hey you. About what? What do you mean about what? About what happened today. My jaw. My entire face injury. I told you about it and I even sent you photos. Why haven't you said anything to me? Don't you have any sympathy or compassion for all of this that I was subjected to? Not to mention by your own father. Oh, about that. <laughs> well, my dad told me all about it. I mean, if you want to know what I think, well, I simply thought it was hilarious. Hilarious? But how can you say that to me? Well, I mean, how fragile are your bones for them to break like that with just a few punches? <laughs> and look at your face! It's so much uglier now. <laughs> You're just way too weak for a guy. You need to man up. <laughs> Whoa. Why are you talking to me like this? Your dad beat the living daylight out of me. And that's what you think? You're just gonna laugh it off? Well, I guess you're right. That wasn't really the funny part. The part where I really laughed out loud was when I heard from dad that you work as a janitor. I was like, are you kidding? Had I known that you were just a janitor, I would not have bothered wasting my time on you. I told you what kind of work I'm involved in. I talked to you about my work all the time. You just never listened to me, did you? You never listen. Look, even though your face is beaten up, I can still see how handsome you are underneath all that. I wouldn't want to give that handsome face of yours to anyone else, now would I? You're lucky that at least you still have your attractive looks, you know? Anyway, you still want to get married, right? I can't believe I'm hearing all of this. What's wrong with you? Well, I assume your answer is yes. And if that's the case, then just go and apologize to my dad, okay? I'll work my magic on him and see if he can somehow forgive you. But you've got to show him that you're sorry and very sorry at that too, okay? Just say that it was all your fault and blame it on yourself. Then it'll all be fine, okay? Uh, do you actually think I still want to get married to you? After what he did to me? You've got to be kidding. If you thought I loved you that much, then think again. I'm so mad at you for not only taking his side, but condoning violence. There's no way we are getting married. And I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to report this to the cops, okay? What? <laughs> You're joking, right? No, I'm dead serious. Don't you think that getting the police involved is a bit too much here? Nope, not one bit. Wow, look at you. Feeling victimized much? Victimized? <laughs> well, isn't this a fact? I am the actual victim here, you know? Jeez, you're so dramatic. Ugh, why don't you get it? We can't build a future together without supporting each other. We can't get married like this. I can't do this anymore, Katie. I'm sorry. I'm breaking up with you. Hey, you. You think you can snitch on me to the cops, huh? I mean, yes. You did assault me after all. Look, you're not telling me that you can't take a little fun between two grown men, right? That was no fun. What? You're telling me you can't take a little fist fight from an old guy like me? <laughs> well, I guess not. 
Being attacked and beat half to death is not my definition of fun. That's far from it in anyone's books. What is wrong with you? Oh man, why do I have to deal with idiots like you? Look, let's settle this like two grown men, alright? Just between us. How much do you want? Wow, you're still not gonna take the blame, are you? Why not act like a real man and own up to what you did, huh? And how much do I want? Huh, I don't need your filthy money. Oh, come on. How about $100? That should be enough for you to get something nice to eat, right? <laughs> That's a lot of money for someone like you, huh? <laughs> You're so pathetic. I told you I don't need your filthy money. You think I do, but that's all because of your twisted stereotype that you have in your narrow-minded brain. <laughs> oh dear. Look, as far as I know, a random janitor one day decided to take my one and only beloved daughter away from me. How else was I supposed to react? I did what any other father would have done. So just let it go, will ya? Let's just call it water under the bridge. Take my money. Get rid of the cops. Have another think about whether you want to marry my daughter or not. <laughs> Done. Yeah? And what makes you think that I still want to marry your daughter? Huh? What's that supposed to mean? I've told Katie already. The engagement is off. There's no way I want to deal with you and her for the rest of my life. What? What the? You telling me that you played around with my daughter? I knew it. You were just playing around from the beginning. If you thought what happened to you before was bad, let me tell you something. I think I've heard enough from you. The police will be paying you a visit soon. Deal with them. Whoa, whoa, okay, okay, jeez. If money is what you want, then listen, here's a deal for you. How about $1,000, huh? How about that? Take it. It's ten times more than my initial offer, yeah? Ugh, you still don't get it, do you? There's no use trying to talk some sense in you. It's not about the money. You need to pay for what you've done, but by showing some remorse, not money. God, fine, fine, fine. If you're gonna make the cops come to me, then I'll sue you for defamation. You can deal with that. You're just a nobody who cleans the dirt. You can't do anything. I'm afraid I'm not just a nobody who cleans the dirt. And what's that supposed to mean? My father is the CEO of a huge successful office cleaning business. We've got contracts with most of the office buildings here in the city, including yours. I'm next in line to run the company. Uh, stop playing with me, kid. I saw you cleaning the lobby up with a mop like an old janitor. Well, of course. It's crucial to understand our employees and offer them the best work-life satisfaction. Our company is nothing without them. So what better way to understand what they go through than by putting myself into their shoes and get on with the daily grind just like they do? Anyway, it's clear to me how you operate. This won't go overlooked, I tell you. In fact, I'll make sure this barbaric incident sees the light of day. Wait, wait. So you're really the son of this huge cleaning service business? And you guys have a contract with our company? I hope that was a rhetorical question. <laughs> Were you even listening to what I said? I told you that my dad handles the contracts with other businesses, including yours. Anyway, my father went ballistic when I told him what happened. Oh no. <laughs> Are you starting to regret what happened now? It's about time you pay for your actions. Your attack on me is officially a felony. And a felon can't possibly continue to work for a business where customer loyalty and trust is the core of any business, right? That is to say that your company has already been informed about your wrongdoing. What? My company knows? Yes, your boss should have heard from my father by now. No, no, no. You've got to be kidding me. I can't let that happen. It's too late to do anything about it. But my job has nothing to do with this. Of course it does. Like I said, who could ever put their trust in a violent person like you? Why would my father's business or any other business want to work with a company that employs people prone to fits of violence? Apparently, we gave you quite a good deal since you were one of our long-term customers who had a very long business relationship with us. But it looks like we have to cut our ties now. Good luck finding another deal that would give you a better offer than ours. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying that you'll cut our contract because of me? You can't do that. <laughs> 
I'm sure you're wishing this was all a bad dream right now. You've made your bed, and now you have to lie in it. Look, look, look. I'm sorry, okay? Let's call it water under the bridge. Look, I'll do anything you want. I'll give you however much money you want. Just please don't get me fired, huh? Like I said, it's too late. It looks like someone has to give up on getting a promotion, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, you know about that? Yeah, <laughs> from Katie. But it's too late now. You might as well forget a promotion if you're gonna get fired soon. <laughs> no, 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 please. I still have a huge mortgage to pay. Look, how about my daughter? I'll give you Katie. You wanted to get married to her. You have my blessing. <laughs> you really weren't listening to what I was saying earlier, were you? Like father, like daughter. You never listen to what other people have to say. I told you the engagement is off. I told you that I want absolutely nothing to do with you. Don't be like that. We're practically family now. You were gonna come over to have a nice meal the other day. How about we make that tomorrow? Or even tonight? Come on, I'm at my wit's end here. What else do you want from me, huh? Nothing. I really want nothing from you. Literally nothing. Goodbye. I reported this incident to the police like I said I would. Mr. Evans, of course, was then taken into custody where he reluctantly admitted to his offenses. Once his company found out about this, as predicted, he lost his job. Now he is left with a mountain of debt which not only includes his mortgage, but also all of my medical fees. As the saying goes, he made his bed and now he has to lie in it.